Hello everyone, this is Yael from Yael Alchemy and I'm here with a weekly message uh, reading for uh, Twin Flames for the week of February 5 to the 11th. Um, I think, I guess I have to explain my absence. I've been out for a couple of weeks and that was because I was down with bronchitis and um, it took a while uh, really to fully get back up. Um, uh, I was ordered total bed rest so I've had quite a backlog also of readings and healings that um, the clients have ordered and uh, I have been negotiating that the past couple of days well after I got well um, a big case uh, came to a head at work and I handled that so that got tossed into my plate and as nobody else could do it so I had to handle that as well um, anyway, uh, I did receive all your emails, your greetings, your comments uh, while I was out and uh, really, uh, I really do appreciate it and it cheered me up really while, while I was away. Um, I wish I could, again, I wish I could reply to each and every one of you. Uh, I apologize for not being able to do so, but these days, since everybody, everything's coming up, you know, there seems to be something coming, coming from uh, far left, far right, you know, from every which way. Uh, it's just like constantly being on triage, okay? So, but thank you, I do appreciate it. And um, uh, another thing, we just had that, um, the blood moon, the blue blood super moon uh, the, on January 31st. And uh, from my vantage point here in my country, it was the perfect time of night, not too late. It's the rock. It came, um, total eclipse came about at 8.30 at night and it was just lovely. And uh, while I was watching it, um, I can't describe the energy wherein it's so... It was very confirmatory in a way because uh, here we have the earth in the middle of the sun and the moon hence creating that eclipse and here uh, if the sun is between the earth and the moon uh, that is the divine masculine energy and the divine feminine energy bombarding the earth of course right now since we're in the middle of all this uh, transitional change and the effects of that yes things are up in the air okay but there is movement, and uh, if you just hang on, then things will smoothen out. But this is to be expected when this big energetic shift came into place. We've done our jobs helping all those energies get anchored down into the earth. But of course, now the earth has got to catch up. Everybody else, especially those who have not been on the ascension process, and it's just, you know, creating a bit of havoc and chaos. And of course, that bounces um, off all those light workers, twin flames, star seeds, and uh, you just have to hang on and um, keep the mastery of the emotion, keep the mastery of thought while everybody else is just, you know, uh, spinning around trying to catch up um, on these energies, whether they realize it or not, okay? So, anyway, let's get on with the reading, okay? Um, you might have forgotten, for those who have just joined the channel, this side is the side of the Divine Masculine, this side is the side of the Divine Feminine, okay? And as always, I've already prayed over the cards and shuffled them, and at the bottom of the deck, uh, we have the Seven of Wands, and this was basically what I was talking about earlier on, because this, this Seven of Wands is usually called the Valor card. It's standing your ground, it's keeping your defenses up in the sense that you don't let those um, energies, people that give off these energies that drag you down, um, 
keeping them at bay. Okay, because like I said earlier, everybody's, uh, you know, uh, like running like chickens without their heads. And a reason for that is because they don't know what's causing all these uh, upheaval, turmoil, and basically just uh, causing them to let all these issues of pride, of ego rise to the surface. But it has to rise. Just in the case of... Um, uh, Starseeds, Lightworkers, Twin Flames. Remember, in our ascension journey, we had to purge. In order to purge, you have to get all those things up into the surface. Um, okay, so anyway, so here, uh, look at this, standing your ground and keeping your vision for the future. That is the three of uh, wands here. Keeping your vision for the future, three of wands. And, uh, and that vision includes the Ten of Cups, okay? Ten of Cups, uh, ultimate joy, happiness, harmony, abundance, whether it's within the family, in your relationships, uh, this is all things working together and not getting that um, emotional feeling as though you're pitting one's emotions against the others and who gets to feel better. This is a card that talks about, you know, Everybody's good with it. Okay, and then we have the Queen of Pentacles. And the Queen of Pentacles, a very nurturing, protective, mother, motherly, maternal energy, but in a very practical way. Seeing to it that everybody gets what they need at this point in time. So those are the energies there. While it's like... Um, while uh, there are crazy things going on around the world in your personal lives and everybody else who just wants something for you, from you, or even though they don't really want anything, but they have um, nothing better to do than just to stand in your way. And that's something that I notice of people who are usually idle. Um... The issues that shouldn't become issues, they blow it out of proportion. But that's just because they kind of feel that they need drama in their life. And um, on the part of the others um, who are affected by that person creating drama, then that's just an opportunity to exercise compassion and a broader understanding. Uh, not to be a doormat and to get stepped all over on by somebody who's lashing out. But, you know, just to understand where they're coming from. And, you know, not take things personally um, if you are the person being lashed out on. Okay? Again, very nurturing and protective um, energy, maternal energy uh, from the twins. Um, as the King of Wands makes its appearance, okay? So this would be the Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine. Because remember, as we said, uh, readings uh, last year, towards the end of the year, and early January, I think I was able to give a reading there. It's time for the Divine Masculine to act, act right now. He's taking the lead, so to speak. So here, that's why he's King of Wands. Um, and the Divine Feminine here... Um, giving a practical practical nurturing um, and making sure that everything is um, working as it should to the best of her ability. But all these, while the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine are focused on these energies at present, just remember that it is a challenging time and we are being told to hold on to that vision of this future. So, you know, uh, if it's challenging, this too shall come to pass. But uh, it would be good to know and have the tools to transform whatever comes up in you because of all these. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so for the Divine Masculine, first card we have for the Divine Masculine is the Devil card. Now, I'm, I'm getting two meanings from this, okay? The first meaning is uh, challenges, opposition, 
um, vices, addiction, some, if you know, uh, getting pulled into that, that lower vibration that I was just talking about. Remember, as he's exerting his will as the king of wands, again, this is a time then when there will be some opposition by others who just again, want something of, from the Divine Masculine, um, and he's trying his best just to either fend them off or just put them in the proper order of priorities. That's one thing. So the other thing is that here, this is a desire to make things manifest because the devil here is um, a very worldly card. And uh, the positive aspects of the devil is that of manifestation in a physical sense okay whether the devil card implies sex whether it implies getting together in a more permanent manner then that's uh, the devil card now we'll see with the clarifying cards later on okay the next card that we have here is the chariot and here when we get the chariot card uh, this is an energy of moving forward okay so uh, because it, it comes after this devil card okay again within those two meanings and remember these readings are for the collective um, they're not cookie cutter because it will resonate with some of the collective depending on where you are in your journey and for uh, others then uh, the other meaning will apply um, to the that segment of the divine masculine collective uh, that it's meant for and during my absence I actually um, realize this that the messages that you need for you come to you at the appropriate time because um, I've had some people discover uh, readings uh, that I've made at various times last year and it just pops up in their queue because there was a message that they needed to hear and uh, that's just the beauty of it it's uh, leave it to the universe to get the messages that you need to you and however way it works if it gets to you then that's great anyway so here the chariot card for those who are trying to get away from from this um, this uh, whether it's bondage addiction whatever this is wanting to get away from it so and this um, very forward moving energy is a good thing to have but honestly uh, what I'm really getting from the devil card isn't really a bad bad thing because it is not um well for most of the divine masculines it doesn't pertain to him okay and i'm talking about the divine masculines that have gone further along in their ascension process uh not for those who have yet to discover who they really are okay it's trying to get away from this conflict uh this very um um, it's like a bullying energy, okay? Uh, it's trying to get away from that. And for those who, whom the devil card means manifestation, this, this means that the divine masculine is, you know, going double time right now uh, in trying to, to lay down the groundwork to manifest uh, the coming together. Okay, and the next card we have for the Divine Masculine is the Queen of Swords. See, uh, and this pertains to a woman. Uh, this is the Divine Feminine, really. Okay, because that's what I'm getting. That he has been separated from for a time. Because the Queen of Swords uh, indicates um, a woman that has, you know, gone through hard times. She's been separated, possibly divorced, widowed. And, you know, she's uh, not really skeptical because she has a kind heart. But uh, uh, she doesn't, she's very... Um, rational in the sense that she doesn't 
let her emotions overwhelm her okay and you know she she rises above the a knee-jerk reaction oh, that comes with emotions and uh not only sees the logic in it but more importantly sees the truth in 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 the matter and he's moving towards this woman again okay and possibly this woman has already transformed if before she was um how do you say it very uh she wore her heart out on her sleeve possibly um you know did foolish things even stalkerish things <laughs> you know right now she's sort of ba she's balanced herself out and she's holding herself with with uh this regal posture and um which is also a f an effect of the eclipse okay uh bringing out that that uh, almost regal dignity because she knows her worth that's why she's not scrambling over and this has been coming up from for quite a long time you know ever since the the runner chaser template doesn't uh apply anymore as much because because we have contributed in raising each other's vibration okay and the last card we have for the Divine Masculine is the Ten of Wands. And the Ten of Wands indicates, um, uh, really, this is a burden. This is a, the, a difficulty, that a challenge that he's going through. And since it falls below the Devil card, see, this is either things that he wants to get away from or even like I said in the case of you know other people although they don't want anything of the divine masculine um, are just in his way okay and he's having a difficult time with that and very quickly I'm going to pick uh, clarifying cards Okay. Okay, for the devil card. See here, these are mountains. It's a sterility, it means he cannot move. It's like he has difficulty. That's why it's such a burden for him uh, already. Uh, because he wants to move forward, but there are others that are in his way. For the chariot card, okay, see here, uh, this is the Divine Masculine moving, transitioning from the moon to the sun, and that is what he wants to move to. He wants to get to a place wherein, you know, uh, of enlightenment already, where everything is not um, dark, shadowed where you can see things clearly and that is move him moving towards this or wanting to uh, but he's having some challenges for the Queen of Swords okay oh see here okay this Queen of Swords uh, earlier I said this could be the Divine Feminine Ah, no, no, it still is. Because here, this, this queen, uh, she doesn't see this coming, okay? Uh, this, uh, this him wanting to be with her, but not, not being able to, to, you know, having some difficulties with that. And here, uh, well, actually, there's two meanings. One is that uh, he doesn't want um, her, the Divine Feminine, to know uh, all this okay because you know it's like he's already taken such a long time and the divine feminine has um, experienced uh, gone through a lot okay holding space for his return and uh, so when he wants to get there uh, he wants to get there um, all fixed so to speak okay 
all these loose ends tied up. Uh, that's what he's having difficulty for uh, with at present. Okay, and the other meaning is that for those, for the divine masculines, well, there's, uh, this could possibly be his karmics, again, holding him back. Um, you know, trying to get in the way of this movement forward and just, you know, throwing things in his path just to delay him and um, all that. For the Ten of Wands... Okay, see here, this is the opposition. This is having such a difficult time with all this opposition. Okay, and for the card of the Divine Masculine, we have here the Knight of Coins. And you can see here two horses that are at it. You know, uh, this is conflict in the real world. Interaction uh, regarding things that are tangible. It could be a situation, but the situation also relates to tangible matters, whether it's money, it's property, but that is just being in conflict. So he has to, Divine Masculine needs to, you know, negotiate that. Okay, for the Divine Feminine, the first card we have for her is the Seven of Cups. And when we get the Seven of Cups, this is usually, this usually pertains to choices. It could be temptation, but uh, the bottom line is that uh, from a myriad of choices, uh, there is a, a, a challenge, a test, which one to pick. And like I said earlier, this pertains to triage, prioritizing. What do you want? What do you want the most, so to speak? Okay, so um, divine feminines um, having difficulty. I don't know. It's like having so many dishes at the buffet table and you don't know which one to put on your plate. So, but that doesn't really pertain merely to uh, romantic uh, opportunities, encounters. No, it, it's everything. It's everything. And then you want to put them, uh, you have your plate and, you know, the plate would symbolize your, uh, what you want to create for yourself. And you have to pick which one. And really the challenge is to pick the one for your highest good. Okay. But then, uh, that's not clear to everybody. So, um, you have to use your own tools, your own intuition to really gauge this. Okay? And the next card that we have here is the King of Swords. Okay. Again, King of Swords, very mature. Okay? It's like this queen of swords so we have a mirroring again here and the the divine feminine here on the side of the divine masculine divine masculine here on the side of the divine feminine and king of swords very mature and uh very decisive okay so for those who are having difficulty picking what they have to do for their highest good among the choices then you need to draw on this energy of the king of swords and you know cut away what what is unnecessary for your journey henceforth and for those who have been with me all these months and yeah years even yeah the past year and a couple months um you know, we have gone through this journey uh, realizing at various stages what we don't need. But of course, because life is cyclical, sometimes they come up, come up again. And uh, But, you know, being stabilized in 5D means you don't waver from your choice. Okay? So, there it is. The next card for the Divine Feminine is the World card. Okay, and see, this is very necessary in uh, completing this phase of the journey in order to get on with the next one. And I suppose because this card has come up, that this pertains to that segment of the collective that is ready to move on to the next phase. Okay, so, you know, 
last bits of challenges there in order to wrap up this phase okay and you know complete complete this um the mastery of emotion the mastery over emotion and the mastery of thought okay and the last card we have for the divine feminine we have the king of pentacles so, and the King of Pentacles uh, is the master of manifestation, and all this is to the end that uh, you'll be able to manifest what you want for yourself, the situations that you want for yourself, and all those opportunities that will lead you uh, to the manifestation of what you want. Because see here, this falls below the Seven of Cups, and these are, you know, all those opportunities that are on offer all those things that you could possibly do, all those courses of action that you could possibly take, okay? And you have to choose. And uh, if you choose the highest one with the help of the energy of the King of Swords, which would be uh, a mirroring aspect of your Divine Masculine, then you're going to succeed in wrapping this stage of the cycle and you're going to be ready to move on to the next one. And in so doing, oops, here. And in so doing, uh, you get to manifest the highest choice possible that you could make. Okay? And let's pick clarifying cards for the. Okay, for the Seven of Cups, okay, see, this is a, this is a plan, this is called Nativity, it's like, you know, a map, and um, it's, what it's showing me is a suitcase, okay, and, you know, when you're going on a trip, and you really can't bring anything and everything that's in your room, you have to pick which one you have to carry on for the next leg of the journey, okay? Or what you're going to take on your trip, okay? Even if you have like, what, 10, 20 pairs of shoes, you have to pick which one you're going to use. Of course, with that, are, that match the outfits that you've packed, okay? So for the King of Swords, okay. See, this is recognition. This is the King of Swords or recognizing this energy that is present in your life. But you have to draw on it. You have to call it and you have to access it. Because, you know, um, it's like information. Uh, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but... Um, you know, uh, let's say you're shopping, you're walking in a mall or in the supermarket or the grocery, and you bump into somebody that, you know, you really know the name of, but because you were thinking about a totally different thing, you can't access that information on the spot at that particular time. But the information is there, and later on, when there's no pressure to retrieve it at a very fast pace, it just floats up to the top. Uh, my point being, this energy is there, but you have to call on it. You have to access it so that, you know, you can use it. Okay. For the world card. Okay. See here, this is delay. This is delay in, you know, completing the cycle. And this is what happens if... Um, depending on what you choose, really. Remember, there is um, one, the highest cup here, that one should pick. Uh, and this is the delay in, in completing this um, cycle for some who have not yet accessed this energy. And you know why? You know why there is a delay? Because this energy helps you get rid of those things that you don't need. They're actually bad for you. And that's why, uh, you know, and until you do, until you even realize that you don't need 
these things, whether they are people, relationships that are toxic, um, anything that's excessive or whatever, then that's going to delay this, this completion. Okay, and for the King of Pentacles, okay, see here, uh, this is, uh, this is really bondage, and, uh, it's like, <laughs> the, the hands of this king are tied as much as he would like to give it give the manifestation of something to you until and unless these lessons are learned okay this sort of um, test has been hurdled then this is only holding you back all these things that you don't want to give up okay because there are other people that thinking picking one will result in not picking the rest Okay, and others will focus on the lack of the six other cups if they pick one. Others will choose to focus on, you know, being in gratitude for having the best cup that they can possibly have. And the six other cups doesn't matter. Okay, so anyway... There, it's just the spirit. Oh, here, we have one more card. See, this is the six of coins. And uh, six of coins implies generosity uh, well, and giving. Okay? This is almost reciprocity or making things balance in the sense of what you put your time and effort into what you spend your money on, uh, who you spend your money on. And these are things that, again, all these things, they're part of all these cups that you have to pick from. And with the appearance of the King of Swords, certainly some of them have to go. Okay, Even if you do this by process of elimination. Because although it is a card... Um, you know, the way it translates in real life, uh, these are maybe difficult things to let go of. Okay? So, there. So, it seems as though both twins are, you know, in challenging times right now. Still drawing support from each other. As they get past all this that's around them. Okay? And I'm going to pick a card in the middle. Oops. Well, let's pick that because that's what I... Here, look at this. We have the Two of Cups and the Three of Cups. Okay? So, there are two cards there. Two of Cups, uh, Romance, uh, Love affection and as they create here three of cups the celebration of, of this love so both twins divine masculine divine feminine like i said earlier drawing on the other's love and support as they get through these trials during this energetic phase okay so that's what i have for you and uh i know it's february it's the it's actually the second reading that i've uh, given weekly reading um for the year anyway valentine's is coming up and the whole month is really a celebration of love that is not to say the rest of the year uh we don't give love because you know it just has to be that way, that we are twins and uh, we reverberate with unconditional love. But for those um, 
uh, for the Valentine's holiday, uh, do check out this love booster that I have up as one of the specials. And that's 30 minutes of Reiki with divine codes to enhance the unity and connection between twin flames and for the love that flows between hearts to be unimpeded unimpeded and to flow both ways to make love new again and to increase the likelihood of forming a romantic relationship and this is for those who who have whose twins are not incarnated for those who still don't know their twin flames and wish to enjoy their time with a romantic partner until divine timing is right for you to meet okay so uh if you are interested in this love booster and um uh you feel that it would greatly help you out then do check it out at um yaelalchemy.com at the specials page on the website okay so that's what i have for you this week take care everyone bye Thank you.